hi everyone uh, in this video i'd like to talk about something very important when it comes to transformers which is the different models that we use for transformers uh, in a previous video we talked about the exact model without any approximation and we try to understand what is the meaning what is the physics of each part of the of the model and today we'll try to see how we can approximate the models what are the justification for this uh, approximation and what are the application of each type of these models so let's start with what we did in a previous video so this is the schematic of a transformer you have a primary winding here we have a secondary winding and we have the core and for each part there is a corresponding components in the model so this is the r and the x for the primary then we have rs and xs the resistance and the inductance for the secondary and then rc and xm are the resistance in shunt or in parallel with the inductance for the for the core rc represent the hysteresis and the eddy current losses in the transformer core and xm represent the magnetization that happens inside inside the core okay now this model called the exact model but has one problem now to go from one side to another side of the transformer we have to use the transformer ratio which is a equal to the number of primary windings divided by the number of secondary winding and we know that the v primary over v secondary in an ideal transformer is equal to a so there is a ratio a between the two and i primary over i secondary is equal to one over a so this implies that the v primary is equal to a v s and the i primary is equal to i s over a it means that the level of the voltage and the current if you go from the primary to the secondary if you go from this side to that side you need to multiply by a for the voltage and divide by a for the for the current and this is very important otherwise you won't be able to solve the circuit if there is a transformer but this is confusing because each time you go from one point to another in the transformer then you have to do this adjustment of the of the ratio plus also the impedances now we know that using ohm's law that z any z r or x is equal to the voltage divided by i so what if i want to refer certain impedance from the secondary to the primary so basically it is a v s divided by one over a i s so it is a square times the voltage divided by the current so there is an a square factor you need to multiply in every single impedance either it is an impedance for the secondary or if it's a load that you want to refer it Okay, so in summary, the voltage needs to be adjusted by multiplying by ratio A. The current needs to be adjusted by dividing by A, and the impedance you need to multiply it by A squared. Now, this is if I want to refer everything from the secondary to the primary. I could refer it from the primary to the secondary. I will do exactly the opposite of the, each of these factors, but I don't want to do that. I want to stick only to referring everything from the secondary to the primary because this is more common, commonly used. So now I want to get rid of this part and I want to have the two circuits, the primary and the secondary circuit connected together. So this is how we do it. So basically here, the primary circuit, nothing has will be changing, but the secondary circuit, the I, you divide by A and the voltage you multiply it by a and basically the any impedance you referred from the secondary to the primary you multiply it by a square as we see here so that's still an exact model but now i just get rid of the ideal transformer ratio between them and i don't need to bother about that okay now this exact model we don't use it much actually 
in many practical application we don't use it why is that first of all and we will see that in a coming video that when we do the measurement to find these components of the transformer we cannot find the exact model we find a reduced model that we'll talk about about it in few in a few minutes so that is the first reason that practically we cannot or it's extremely difficult to measure the exact components. We only can measure a reduced model. Second, in the power system, if you wanna work with the power system, there are many of those transformers. So if I use the exact model in all of them, then that will be computationally very, very expensive. And this may even cause some problems with the software that we use to measure the voltages and the currents in the power system. So we need to have a reasonably reduced model that does not really compromise much the accuracy, but make the analysis much, much easier as we will, we will see. So the first reduced model, what we will be doing, basically we will be moving the impedance of the primary winding from this side to that side. Okay, so basically you have now R equivalent and X equivalent, and R equivalent is the primary resistance plus the A square AS because they are in series, and X equivalent the same thing. So basically we just moved the core part behind those impedances of the primary, and then we can add them in, in series. Now, what is the justification? The first and the most important justification that when we do the measurement in the lab, that's what we can get. We find R equivalent, X equivalent, RC and XM. Okay, so we can find only R equivalent and X equivalent. We cannot find R1 by itself and R2 by itself. So that is the first uh, justification. The second one is the error is very, very small because this branch is extremely large compared to R equivalent, X equivalent. So the current I0 is extremely small compared to I1 to R and I2 uh, over A. So if it's very small, the voltage drop that we have here, now because I1 now will, will contribute to the voltage drop in that branch, okay? And I1 is a bit larger than I2 over A because basically I1 is equal to I0 plus I2 over A. So if I do a voltage calculations in this model, the voltage drop here in RB plus XB plus the voltage drop there is plus AV2 is equal to V1. Now, when I move this part here, I'm not multiplying by I1, I multiply it only by I2 over A. So it is, there's an error. But because I0 is extremely small, then the error will be, will be very, very small. Now, the application, this application is used whenever you want to study the performance of a transformer, a single transformer connected to a load. So students who are studying, for example, in an energy conversion course, usually we have only one transformer. So that is the, the model that we basically most of the time used for a study that require only one single transformer. Now, we move now to the second model or reduced model. Now, we mentioned that I0 is extremely small compared to I1 and I2 over A. So what if I just completely remove it? Okay, and then I will have just R equivalent and X equivalent without having this branch because the contribution of this branch is extremely small, okay? That it will not affect. Now here in this model, I1 will be equal to I2 over A. In the previous model, I1 is equal to I0 plus I2 over A. But I0, as I said, is very, very small. So I can ignore it and I have this, this model. And that is the justification for that model, that because I0 is very, very small compared to I1 or I2 over, over A. And now this model can reduce significantly the computational complexity of the, 
of the previous model when we ignore the, the shunt element. So we are gaining a lot by little bit sacrificing in the accuracy, you are gaining a lot in terms of the computational complexity in your in your system. Now, what is the application of this model? We use this model now whenever we deal with many transformers in the power system, but we need to consider the losses in the winding of the transformer. So sometimes when you do what we call load flow analysis, in that the losses are very important to us. So we might want to consider also the losses from the, from the transformers. So we need to keep the resistance of the, of the transformer. The final model that we'll talk about today is that we can also ignore our equivalent. And the justification that because X equivalent is much, much larger than R equivalent. So the voltage drop here is mainly coming from X equivalent. So we can ignore R equivalent. Now, where we can use this model, we can do it in different types of uh, studies, like for example, short circuit analysis, transient stability, reactive power compensation, R is not required in these in these models. So we can ignoring R, knowing that X equivalent is much larger than R equivalent, then this will not really impact much those studies. So to, in conclusion, we have different models starting from the exact to basically this simple model with just one equivalent inductor. Okay, and based on the studies, based of our interest, we can use these different models.